We can't care for someone else if we've used up all of our petrol in our tank looking after someone else. We need to recognise that self-care is of paramount importance. You know, I was really upfront with her and said, at the very beginning, and said, I find I'm really frightened about this and I'm sad and scared, but I'm going to be here no matter what. Um, and then after that, you know, I would make sure I spoke to my mum or to my husband if I needed to. A diagnosis of breast cancer is a trauma for all individuals involved. It's a trauma for the entire family, for the entire community. The idea of ripples in a pond is an important one to think about. We know that anxiety and depression are common, but we also know that there's also a great sense of grief and loss around the loss of the relationship that they may have, the changing role, the changing responsibilities. It's always important to also make sure you had your own time and your own quiet space to do your own hobbies, to make sure you're, you know, because I was still working full time, so, you know, juggling and, and doing all of that and making sure that you have your own downtime, otherwise, you know, it can be overwhelming. So just for people to remember that your own time is important and it's not selfish time, it's actually necessary time. I think for me, keeping busy is, is good, keeping a positive outlook and I'd get to the gym and hang out with my friends and do all the things that I usually do. Important tips and strategies that I might suggest would be uh, actually looking after their own health and wellbeing recognising that the caregiving role can cause significant distress and having some positive strategies in their own life to ensure that they're not neglecting their diet, that they're exercising, that they're drinking enough water, that they're making sure they get out in the sunshine, that they're monitoring their own sleep habits. And all of these things are going to give them the buoyancy that they need to actually provide care on an ongoing basis. It's also about recognising the emotional impact and not negating it. Not saying things like, but I'm not the one who's sick and therefore I don't need to get any help. I need to be strong. I need to be. It's recognising that if you need support and assistance, then it's there and you just need to access it. When I thought about trying to talk about this with my friends, something held me back. I wasn't confident that I was going to get a helpful response. People didn't know how to do that. And with my male friends, you know, a lot of them didn't. A lot of them didn't know how to help. You want to be able to talk. You want to be able to, you know, you might have some bad feelings that you want to be able to express safely, you know, because you don't want to express them at home. Many, many carers say they don't want to talk about the burden, if you like, of their caregiving responsibilities with the person they're providing care for. Being able to talk to someone else can be very helpful. You want to be able to talk to somebody who lets you talk and who you're confident sort of understands what you're talking about. If I had to go through the experience again, I'd be more proactive about trying to find some support for myself. We do things together now to, you know, stay healthy. So it's definitely changed our lives. And I think now being so many years after mum's diagnosis, we have taken a positive outlook on life, which at the time we probably took took for granted. I feel incredibly lucky that Lisa has recovered. Sharing that experience with her has just added a whole extra dimension to our friendship.